Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about oil washes. Uh, so some time back I did a video on using oil paints and I had promised a future video on oil washes. Well, here we are. So, uh, we're going to talk about oil washes today, what they're good for, why you would want to use them, etc. Okay? Uh, so let's talk about the very basics. We all know what a wash is, so I'm going to start there, that you know what a wash is. In general, it's taking some kind of paint or shade color, say, like normally we think of it, we often think of the GW shades, you know, in old oil, and you run it all over the thing and it flows into the cracks and settles into the low points. Okay. The problem with those shade colors is twofold. First off, they're very dull. Now, GW makes a glossy line. There are inks that are glossy, etc., so you can get around that sometimes. But even then, they just don't really preserve, in my mind, the shininess of metal. Okay. Um, the second problem with, well, and we'll talk about that in a moment, why oil is then better. The second problem is those shades stain and it drives me insane um so if you're a person like me when you wash a model if you've ever noticed your after you wash your model it looks dirty that's or if you've ever heard somebody refer to it as coffee staining that's what's happening if you run a shade over it the, it has to do with the pigment density versus the medium and why it's doing that okay an oil wash is a very different animal um, and an oil wash is made by taking a large amount of, or sorry, a small amount of oil paint and a large amount of usually some kind of white spirit or odorless thinner. Um, this is the one I happen to like. You can use whatever one you want, but look up white spirit or odorless thinner um, for oil paints. And there you go. And you take that and you mix it, say something like this. And what you get is something that looks like that. Now, we'll get into what made this here in just a second. But this piece right here has been oil washed, okay? And when you look, you can see the cracks and the shade and the dark parts. Now, this was all pre-done with, uh, this, was, this was all pre-shaded with Vallejo metal color. Um, and to me, this just looks fantastic. Like, look at that from the top. And how bright and shiny that is. Now look at that from the bottom. That is almost black. Right? That's, but when you look at it normally here, where you would normally be looking at it, you can see then that wonderful variance. Um, right? That's, so this was all appreciated and done in a zenithal style with Vallejo metal color. And to me, this reads like true steel. Just look at that. Look at that reflection. Look at that smoothness. No visible pigment. All right. We all know I love Vallejo metal color. So, what this has done is you can see how all the lines have these dark ridges around them. Now, let's compare that to the legs here, which have not been washed. This has just had the normal pre-shading done. So we have some distinction, like you can see here under these big joints, where we've gotten, you know, where we have the illusion created. But what we don't have is like, say, here on these rivets, or in here, right? These still look very flat. The other reason I, so, so oil washes with normal miniatures can be great because <clears throat> they don't tend to coffee stain. And the reason they don't coffee stain is because they take a long time to dry. And in that time, you can wipe them off, which is what you're going to see me do. Oil washes have the wonderful property that because they're made with oil paint and take a long time to dry. Now, Oil washes dry much faster than just straight oil painting, but they still take a while. If you've got a large flat space and you run some paint over it, as I'm about to do here for you, uh, you run your wash over it, you can then go back and remove it from all the large flats and just leave it to dry down in the recesses. So that provides you with a nice clean wash. Oil paints also have a natural sheen. The two places I really love using oil washes are metal, specifically steel, because it just gives it a wonderfully worn, sort of like really lived steel look. Like there's the other arm right there. You can see that, that sort of shading, that patina 
that it gives it, it's just really hard to achieve that sort of almost smokiness with anything else but an oil paint, okay, or an oil wash. So the other place I really like it is flesh. We'll probably talk about that later of how to use oil washes and oil paints to, to bring out and increase volume in flesh. That's another future video. For today, we're going to talk about just applying the wash. So what, what have I done? I've mixed up an oil wash. What is it mixed from? It is mixed from, uh, from my previous video, you know I just use these Windsor & Newton Winton oil color paints. They're pretty cheap. You can get a fair amount of them. They're not, I don't know, they're not super expensive. I paid maybe $25, $30 on Amazon for a set and then bought a couple other colors I like. So, I mean, I'm probably in for $45 or $50 bucks for oil paints that will last me for hopefully the rest of my life. So that's not bad. Um, specifically, what I have here is a mix of three to basically one and a half to one. So a lot of black, a tiny amount, uh, maybe a little bit less than half as much burnt sienna, and a touch of the cobalt violet. Uh, I did that for two reasons. One, the burnt sienna is very important to me. It adds a brown tone to steel. And in this case, for this Imperial Knight, I wanted it to look used, lived in. This has been, this is not a machine that came off the factory line. And oils and things like that tend to stain brown. Old steel that has been worn and weathered in any way has a slight brown sheen to it. Usually because oils actually, or sorry, uh, steel is not actually completely flat. Like to our eye, it looks very flat. But if you actually zoom in with any kind, like even a magnifying glass, you can see it. You don't need a microscope. You'll see there's actually little bumps and ridges and imperfections in the steel. And those trap dirt and dust. And so it gives this sort of faint hue of brown to it. So that's why we mix in a little bit of our burnt sienna. And if you look at this, you can see, especially around in here and in here, where there's just a little bit of that brown. All right, look up in there. Now, again, you can play it up or down. You can push it more. If you want it to be really old and aged, you could really increase that. So that's the mix I went for. It's what I like. So I put all those together with a bunch of white spirit. Uh, how much is it mixed? Great question, imaginary person on the internet. Um, well, it's mixed about this much. How much is that? I don't know. But you can see see how that flows right there? That's how thick it is. Try to make it look something like that. My recommendation, when you pour it in, just, you know, test it. <laughs> Put it on something that isn't your miniature first and see how it looks. Um, that's my that's my recommendation. So, how what am I going to do? Well, I've mixed up my wash. And I've got it, you can see it, ready to go. My little black-brown-purple mix. First thing I'm going to do is when I get it, I'm going to... You notice the side of this is all messy? That's because I've constantly gone like this. Because I don't want a super duper huge amount on there. Then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to like get on in there. Oh yeah. That's right. Just get in there. Make sure you get it into all those cracks and crannies. You want to make sure you don't like if you see extra. You want to go ahead and sop that up. You don't want a huge amount being that you have to soak up later out here on the flat spaces. You want to make sure you're really catching those low points. Make sure you're catching those rivets, right? That kind of thing. Really get it in there. Uh, I like a little pointed brush like this so I can reach around and get into like the deep spaces like that. Use whatever type of brush you want. Um, except use your synthetic brushes for this, by the way. Don't use a nice uh, sable like watercolor brush for your oil washes. You will regret that. Um... So you notice I'm just really trying to focus on getting it down in every little crack, like here on the feet, where this little thing is. I don't know what you, whatever this little ridge here is. Made sure to flow it down in there, but with that piece, I'm just going to see how I do. I don't want that to pool there, so I just come back in. Make sure we get it on all the feet like that. The harder you push your brush, the more it will just flow out. All right? So, then I just continue on around the thing. Uh, in this case, I'm going to come back later and do things like the these tubes and all that. That'll all be painted after I'm done with this. Now, in the case where you've got like a really bright section, like the top here, 
Maybe I don't do it smoothly across. Maybe I don't touch it at all. Maybe I just start on the side because I don't want to really hit any of that. And that's fine. Okay. Um, if you have super strong highlights at a point, you don't necessarily have to wash the whole thing. With a normal wash, when you don't wash everything, if you're, if you're being sloppy like this and you don't wash everything, it becomes very noticeable because you get this sort of patina stain that's the edge of your wash. But that's not the case with an oil wash because of what we're about to do in a moment. So I'm going to finish doing this leg and then I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, so we're just getting it in here everywhere, everywhere, do, 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 nice, and getting in all those cracks, lots of oil wash, okay, there we go. Okay, there we go, I'll do the other leg in a minute, off camera. All right, so then I just get, like, I'm just, make sure that it's all out of the brush, I take my brush, and I'm just going to wipe it all off right there. Just wipe, 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 wipe. Get it all nice and just beat these up. That's the other reason I like these nice, big, cheap, synthetic brushes for this. Because when you're using oil, oil paints, you can often just beat your brushes up fast. Okay, now we come to the options of how do we clean this off. Because now we're going to wipe those flats. And we're going to soak up some of that excess. Options. One, Q-tip. All right, a fine option. Q-tips can work. I don't tend to like them. Um, they tend to leave residue behind. Option two, another brush. A dry brush. Like, I don't mean dry brushing. I mean a completely bone dry brush. Also a good option. That one's fine. Option three, a makeup sponge or brush. Good. If you have a, a wife who's got some extra makeup sponges or little rounds, that's fine. Option four, ta-da. This is a piece of, um, like, out of, a, out of a blister. I like this one because you can also kind of shine. When you're done, it should look like this. <laughs> when you start, it looks like this. Uh, and so what I do is I just very quickly wipe over all the high points. Okay. And then every so often I just do that. Sorry. I just do that to make sure I'm not getting any liquid. Because you don't want to be spreading around liquid. Spreading around oil. You want to be pulling off. You notice I'm dragging down. Because I want to go with the directionality of my light source. So, in other words, this is where the light is coming from. I want this part of the steel to be bright. I don't want to remove the oil I've slopped on underneath as much. So, I'm pulling with the direction of my light here. Okay. And what this is going to do is it leaves your big flat spaces nice and open, okay? So that that way no wash settles on them. No wash is going to dry right there or right there. No coffee stain, none of that bad effect, okay? Now, there you go. And you can see, look how much different that looks compared to that leg. Just right that quick, right? Now, this is going to take a little while to dry because it is still an oil wash. And generally, you want to leave it for several hours at least. This is a longer process than with, you know, your shade washes. But it adds such a wonderful hue, such wonderful, like, sort of, a, as I said, that smoky patina to your steel. I think it just really is a great way to go with it. Now, you can push it farther. You don't have to stop there. That was kind of my all-over wash. If I really wanted to get in deep and, you know, kind of, like, push some other things, I could get some more of the oil wash, and in a targeted way, I could kind of get it up under here, or reinforce this area here, right? If I really want to kind of, if, I, if there's a joint that I that, that I want to show kind of, like, really leaking grease, like these pistons here, right? So I'm going to really give them a good coat. Or here down on the feet or something, right? So if you really, really want to push it, you can you can just get a little more on there. And then what I like to do, this is my own personal taste, your mileage may vary, but what I like to do is once I get to that point, the second time around is when I like to get my brush out. So I take my dry brush here, and now I just go for a little bit of like smoothing. 
this is where I'm almost using the wash and pulling it into be kind of a paint. And then again, same thing. I just dry, 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 get all that off there so I get a nice bone dry brush again. Okay. And there we go. And then I just pull that down, pull that down. And what you're getting is you're not removing all of it with the brush. That's the key. The brush is never going to be, is never going to pull off as much as, say, you know, a sponge or a makeup sponge or something like that. That's why I like to do it on the second run through. It kind of just gets your excess off, but leaves a little bit of that patina behind, right? All right. So there you go. I'm going to let that dry completely. I'll do the other leg, and then we'll come back in a little while, and we'll take a look and see what the effect is. There we go. So back in a few moments. All right, and we're back. And so several hours have passed, and I've let it dry. And I want to mention something right up top here that I didn't mention in the previous section, but is critically important. Um, in between using your acrylic paint and your oil paints, make sure you have a layer of varnish or something to protect it. Um, in the case of these metals, like the Vallejo metal colors, where I really want to preserve this shine, um, they actually have a metal varnish that they uh, sell that goes with it. So that's what I used. But you could use, you know, your um, your pledge, you know, floor polish with Future Shine or, you know, some other kind of varnish, satin or gloss varnish or whatever, or, or anything. Um, just depends on the surface you're trying to work with. So make sure you get a good layer of varnish on there before you put on your wash because those... Uh, mineral spirits can eat through acrylic paint. Okay, so that being said, everything's nice and well, everything has dried for the most part. And this is where we come to the you know important element of working with oil paints. If you get to the point where you look at it later and you're like, oh, this it dried too thick, or I want to take something off, like let's say right in here. Okay, you look at it and you're like, well, I didn't want it to be quite this dark or something like that, or it, it dried on there a little too much. First of all, so it's been about, since I put this on, uh, in real time, this has been about uh, six hours, maybe seven. Yeah, probably six hours. Um, so that's where we're at. I can get in here with a normal brush. This is just a, some dry, this is just a dried brush. And I can still pull some of it off. Okay? Now, if you can't get any more off, if it's dried completely... The other thing that you can do is you can go back, get just a touch of your white spirits, okay, of your your white spirit or your odorless thinner, and I can get in there and go like that, and you'll reactivate it for the most part, and then be able to pull it right off of there, okay? Now, you want to be careful with this. You don't want to go too crazy, but you can see, see that, what I pulled off of there? Now, is it going to be a lot? No, but you can back some of it off and then carefully get rid of it, or if it got too strong or happened to, to dry funny somehow, you can make that correction. That's one of the really, really nice parts about this. So if you have parts that you want to be really, really super shiny, but you still got your, but you got some oil paint on it and it dried some of your oil wash, you can just get in there, get some of that odorless thinner on there, and oops, as I throw my brush around the room, and you can just pull that right back off. Now there's a limit on that. Eventually it's going to kind of set completely, and you know then it's going to be really tough to do anything. You could damage it or you know sort of scrape the paint, start pulling up layers. So you do want to be careful with that. Um, it's more something you can do in kind of the hours that follow. But the point is, is that once you've got that on there, now you've got a nice, uh, to me, what is an extremely nice little layer of this where um, it's just like the, 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 the shine that you get out of the oil paint, the extra, as I said, the patina in the previous one. You can see how rich those shadows are. Um, if you still want to work it in, my usual next step when I work with these oil washes is the same thing I do with normal paint, which is to say you might start with the wash being all over, but then what you maybe want to do, so we'll go back. I still have some of my wash here from earlier, so we'll remix that up. 
it's thicker now because I've left it just sitting here and a lot of the odorless thinner has evaporated. So we have a higher content of, uh, of paint now. But what I, want, what I like to do is come in here and do what I would normally do, which is maybe touch some of these rivets a little more carefully. When you do go back in here, you want the, like I said, you're, you're putting on some thinner, you're gonna reactivate old layers of paint. So you do wanna be a little careful. But here's where you can go back in and do some of your careful touches, right? So if you've got these areas, like the rivets you wanna get real nice, if you wanna get under there and really have a nice, you know, smooth shadow, these kinds of things, this can be your chance to work stuff like that in, okay? And of course, you can still just wipe your brush and then just smooth it right back out. That is always the advantage to these oil paints because they're taking a while to dry. You can just achieve these nice, smooth effects just by kind of pushing it around, removing some of the excess. So just like I did when in the painting with oil paints video, which is back on, I think, Hobby Cheating 82, um, you can do the same thing here. So at this point, I kind of just mess around, push some colors up here and there where I feel like maybe the shadows aren't dark enough, and then leave it to dry. Um, generally, when you want to let this totally set, you're going to want to give it at least 24 hours for your oil wash to really, really set completely. Don't rush it. Um, once it's completely set, you can put a new layer of varnish over it and then come back in with your acrylic paints and do some more work on top. So for example, what I'll do here um, before I'm done is once everything is completely dried and set, I'll probably come in and take some of my very bright silver and catch a couple of these highlights again, like I'll do some edge highlights and stuff like that, just to really get everything nice and picked out. But that's all work for later, uh, as we're, for right now, we're just going to keep playing with shadows for a little while and, uh, and see where we end up. So there you go. That's using your oil washes. Um, I hope that was interesting for you, and I hope you see some of the ways you could use it, especially on things like metal, um, to really get a great smoky effect. Um, so the summation that I would give you for this is basically as follows when you're working with your oil paints. Here's your, your things to remember. Uh, number one is uh, you want to make sure that you've already got your base coloration down. So in this case, I had the, you know, the sort of... Uh, steel to silver zenithal down. You want to give a nice varnish. Um, you want to make your wash out of a, a mix of white spirits and a small amount of paint. I can't tell you the exact ratio, but it's, you know, 10 to 1 often, something like that. It's pretty thin, okay, as being the point. Um, and uh, in general, when you're doing things like black washes, uh, especially on metal, I like a mix of Something like this, like a black, a brown, and a little bit of purple. The purple adds just a little bit of uh, color interest to it. Um, kind of brings out a little bit more of the, the patina. It actually works really well with the brown. These two work nicely together. Um, but you could also do this with a little bit of blue if you wanted to add a blue tint to your steel. So you could get rid of these two and, uh, and mix in like a phthalo blue or something like that. Okay. Um, give it a good wash all over, and then you're, and then you take and you void and wipe off the excess. Um, that could be done with, as I said, like a Q-tip. Can be done with a nice uh, brush. Can be done with like a makeup sponge or something like that. Or what I'm doing here, which is a little foam from inside a clam pack. Um, I always keep these. I have a big collection of these every time I get a clam pack that has them in there. Because these are just sort of endlessly useful. These are a great tool for stippling as well, by the way. Um, just in case you ever are looking for a good sponge to do that. And what you end up with is, I think, a really nice looking, uh, very natural steel. Um, to me, something that looks like a machine that's in use, um, that still had good, uh, you know, still had a really smooth steel, but that's got, you know, a little bit of age in it, um, which I like a lot. Um after this, you can also go and, you know, apply pigments and rust and weathering and all that other stuff. You can level layer this up from here as however you want. And that's obviously where this is going to go in the long run. But that is for another video. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed using oil washes. I hope you see how you could use them yourself uh, in some interesting ways for the future. Uh, appreciate you watching as always. Give it a like uh, if you liked it. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. 
Uh, share it with somebody if you think they're working on some giant robots or some other ways that they could use oil washes in a fun way. Uh, and as always, we'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.